Uh, Christian, are you ready to start with the first couple of slides? Then I will continue. Sure, please go ahead. So I hope we have, uh, there's some potential for uh, using linked data to work for language resources. So, um, and works with such kind of data. There are tools and potential consumers for such data. It can solve issues of interoperability and reusability, and it actually is a prototypical implementation of the FAIR principles. Um, however, there are a number of minimal requirements uh, we need to meet in order to um, in order to make linked data work for language resources. And this includes to make um, RDF views on language resources uh, accessible via HTTPS. It means that we need to ensure long-term availability under persistent URIs. And it means that these URIs need to resolve and not just for each resource as a whole, but for every element within a resource. Um, one way of doing this is to expose the data as uncompressed RDF. So, uh, for example, if data dumps can be, uh, can be hosted, um, they should have the media type, uh, a media type that is compliant with RDF technology, but not just text plane or application octet stream. So the downstream applications know what to do with this kind of data. Uh, in reality, in fact, these requirements, as low as they might be, are partially met only, so we have a number of issues and challenges. Yes, so um, these this, uh, minimal requirements that uh, Christian mentioned sometimes are, are not fully met. And um, this led to some issues, for instance, the well-known uh, cloud of linguistic link data, which is a part of the broader link data cloud. At, uh, sometimes, um, well, you want to access the different data set, the different bubbles, and they are okay. They have, they are, the data is exposed. There are URIs def defining the data. It is the referenceable. It gives you with um, RDF links to other data sets and so on. But that's, sometimes you access, you can uh, find out also uh, data sets that are not working anymore or um, are not linked. Are, uh, to uh, to other data sets anymore, so experiencing issues, uh, maybe because of uh, the, the 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 service that uh, was not continued in hosting or something like that. So that leads to um, our first challenge, which is how to find sustainable hosting solutions, because many data set providers haven't found one yet. There are other issues which are related to how the information, how the data is uh, stored and exposed in, in linked data. For instance, uh, a way to expose the data um, is uh, fully server side. So needing a triple store and a Spark end, uh, endpoint. Uh, so having a server up and running with uh, an exposing um, linked data all the time. Uh, this can be okay for certain companies or for certain institutions, but maybe not for uh, a casual uh, user or provider of, of uh, linguistic uh, data as linked data. On the other extreme, there are solutions um, in which is the customer or the user of, of, the, of the data responsible of, of uh, processing the data and query it and and having well so so downloading the data, the data dump and process it locally maybe in a local triple store or whatever so in the in this is the other extreme in which you are putting all the effort or the burden burden on the data consumer so the challenge here is how to balance effort efforts between data providers data consumers and data hosts that's the challenge there are interesting intermediate solutions already in in place, um, this picture that uh, we put in this slide comes from a linked data fragments initiative, where it is um, well explained the, the issue, which is on the on the right hand side we have um, everything is in the server, so high server cost, and on, on the other hand everything is on the client, so high client cost. But there are maybe other options in between. 
uh, this is for instance the link data fragments initiative or sparkler uh, where you can access uh, and query rdf data not strict, strictly needing to be exposed through uh, a sparkler endpoint and also this idea of hosting uncompressed rdf dumps with rdf meta types um, so this leads us to the next issue uh, Christian, maybe you can continue with this. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we could make a claim that, that linked data is great for sustainability, that it also needs to work for researchers and applications. Um, and uh, this involves a number of separate issues. Um, so one issue is how can we integrate uh, linguistic linked open data technology into existing research and processing workflows? And from our practice, we know that engineers and researchers prefer to extend solutions they have at hand rather than to find their way into a new technology. And this is a typical approach and it's pragmatic and will work fine, uh, but in the long term, it doesn't really scale. Um, RDF uh, in this context is clearly more of a backend technology. So this is nothing that a researcher should be exposed to. So we wouldn't require linguists to learn anything about RDF, um, which is why we need uh, bridge technologies. And a number of such are developing. So in the lab script, for example, uh, JSON-LD is used as an inter interchange format between different NLP services. Um, the Lex Zero editor is a natively uh, linguistic linked open data tool based on Ontolex. Um, or lemon um, and kernel RDF is a technology to basically um, to basically um, transform um, tabular annotations into RDF representations and back. Um, the question is now uh, whether there's any role or any active role that larger infrastructure projects could play here. So could that be something um, within the scope of the ELG or maybe within Clarin? And if so. How could we support that? And what would be the um, requirements and, uh, well, ways to support that actually? Uh, could you go to the next slide? Um, another related issue is uh, that we also need to integrate uh, LLD technology in, um, that we also uh, need to lower the entry barrier for language resource providers and consumers. And uh, this might require the development of more power su powerful support and infrastructures for this purpose. So it would be ideal to have something like WordPress for websites, but instead for small link data providers. And indeed, there are some steps in this direction. So there's the database uh, project by the uh, Dbpedia community. There's a semantic media wiki, which basically allows you to add audio of metadata to uh, a media wiki. And again, there's a question, is there any place or any role how such efforts could be aligned with uh, what otherwise is going on within the ELG, within Clarin? Um, yeah, and basically these were a number of possible issues. And I would hand over to Jorge now. Yeah, so our presentation ended here. Uh, so we are open for questions.